Hello everyone. A couple of weeks ago, a lady who was taking part in one of my photography workshops asked me what settings I tend to use when I'm photographing butterflies. So today I thought I'd make a quick video and share some hints and tips and some of the equipment that I use. I've come to Earthrox, which is a site of special scientific interest. It's managed by the Butterfly Conservation Charity and is located just south of Rhythin in North Wales. Uh, this is a, quite a unique example of a limestone pavement, a habitat that is perfect for a wide range of butterfly species. As you can probably tell from the sunshine, I've chosen around about midday to start photographing the butterflies. And I've done this deliberately because at this time of day, they're going to be more active. They're going to be feeding on the wildflowers that are here. And I'm going to get better photographs of them with their wings apart, rather than perhaps early in the morning when they're just going to be settled and haven't fully woken up. Well, this amazing plant is Devil's Bit Scabious, and this is one of the reasons that I've come to Earthrox today, as the butterflies absolutely love it. And it's been covered with species such as Red Admiral, Small Tortoiseshell, Comma, Large White, there's been a couple of Painted Ladies, um, and it just covers the limestone pavement. It's just beautiful in its own right. A macro lens is a great choice for any sort of insect photography, but it does mean that you have to get quite close to your subject. So today I'm going to be using the Sony 100-400mm G Master. Now this is a great close-up lens, um, it enables me to get really close to my subject, but I can also use all 400mm of zoom, which means I'm not risking scaring whatever I'm taking a photograph of and it flying off to the next plant. Now both Canon and Nikon have equivalent lenses. Canon's Mark II 100 to 400 millimeter EF lens allows you to close focus and is a great lens, as does their RF glass. If you have a bridge camera, or a super zoom camera, try using the maximum amount of zoom that your camera allows and staying back from your subject a little because the last thing we want to do is disturb any of the nature that we photograph. So that brings me to my first tip. Just be aware of where you're standing and whether your shadow is going to cross the animal, especially on a day like today, because that can often scare them. And likewise, try to uh, limit your movements to slow and deliberate movements rather than rushing in. Now, when I'm photographing butterflies, I don't mind actually shooting down on the subject because it puts the butterfly in context and shows more of the flower. But I'm still looking for a clean background and nothing that's particularly distracting. So watch out for diagonal sticks or leaves that are a very bright colour. There are no right and wrong settings for photographing any sort of wildlife. But for butterflies, I like to start with an aperture of about f5.6, which means that my depth of field is enough to capture the wings and the thorax and the antenna of the, uh, of the butterfly we're photographing. Shutter speeds will vary somewhat on the amount of light you have, but I would start at round about one two hundredth of a second because it's likely that the butterfly is moving, the leaf that or the, the flower that it's sitting on is moving, and the camera might be moving a little bit, and all of those add up to tiny micro movements on your frame. So a higher shutter speed, um, sacrificing ISO a little bit, is probably better than trying to use a low shutter speed and ending up with a blurry photograph because of tiny movements in the frame. 
Now your camera has two other important settings that I like to use. So the first one is continuous autofocus, uh, partly for the reason that I just mentioned that there are tiny movements and you need the camera to keep up with that. One shot just doesn't cut it in that regard. And also how you meter the frame. And rather than using evaluative or zone metering, I like to use spot metering, which follows the focus spots, especially for white butterflies, because otherwise you'll find that the camera exposes for the whole frame and the white of the butterfly is often overexposed. If you use spot metering, you shouldn't have that issue. One of the things to remember is to use the smallest focus spot that your camera has and to put it just on the head of the butterfly. That avoids the camera accidentally focusing on the flower or the wings of the butterfly. It's worth mentioning that butterfly species all across the UK are in serious decline, but thanks to charities such as Butterfly Conservation, areas like this are maintained and managed for the benefit of incredibly rare species such as the dingy skipper or pearl bordered fritillary. We can all do our bit and if you'd like to help, just search Butterfly Conservation and take a look at some of the information that's on their website. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's short video from this amazing location in Wales. If you have any questions, just pop them in the comments below the video. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel because that really helps as we go forwards. Thank you for watching. That's saying the battery's three minutes, you're joking.